Hello students, today we're going to talk in detail to how you can study anything, technically anything. How can you memorize how the brain functions and how you can remember lengthy answers, how you should work on revising the entire chapter, whatever examinations you are up to or whatever, whatever is your deal with the examination, this video is going to give you a detailed analysis of memory techniques and how to study. Here's the first one. Whenever you look at an answer, I want you to decode that answer into the total number of points that it has. So let's say there's a question like, um, uh, okay, inert gases are placed in group uh, zero, something like that, okay? So how many points should be there? So let's say there are four points to that answer. Now I want you to look at what are the keywords of each of these four points. So let's say the keywords could be uh, stable configuration, eight electrons in the outermost orbit, stable, you know, these keywords go tau. And all you have to learn is only these keywords, only the keywords, sentence aapko aapke bhaashe mein banana hai. You don't have to memorize the whole answer. You have to memorize the keywords of each point. So if you have memorized four words, it means that your answer has four points. The second, whenever you finish learning an entire chapter, you are supposed to create a mind map of that chapter, which means you write the name of the chapter in center and spring out the different parts. And from each part, you will spring out the sub parts. Is tarike se, the whole chapter comes in front of you in one page. And likewise, when you finish an entire subject, let's say physics pura khatam ho gaya aapka, you're supposed to write down physics and sub chapter ka naam liko and all formulas ko wahan liko. You can summarize the entire subject or the entire chapter on one page if you know how to do it using a beautiful technique called as a mind map. Now, you know how the brain functions? The brain functions in a very special way. It can remember and think in pictures. If you are going to study words without associating it with images, you're not going to be successful enough to do that. So for example, if I ask you, tell me something about the Taj Mahal. You know, you can see the Taj Mahal up here, which is why you can write a lot of things about the Taj Mahal. But if I tell you, uh, speak something about the blast furnace, if you do not have a good image about the blast furnace, you cannot write sufficient about it because your brain thinks in pictures. If you give pictures to the brain, you can really, really write well, elaborate well. Well, think of your first relationship. You see what happens here? You can see the whole picture. When you see the picture, you can draft a lot of things. So your brain thinks in pictures. Another important way in which you can recollect, comprehend and present your answer is by reciting it. Which means if you have one hour to study, spend only 20 minutes in reading, the remaining time you should spend in reciting it. The best way to study something very boring, very complicated is by talking to yourself teaching a group of children because when you teach you learn twice so talking about it reciting it is a best way to learn so keep talking about that answer you know in your memory and recite it regularly when a particular answer has 10 points like for example you're learning history or you're learning something very theoretical and it has like 10 points now how do you remember these 10 words of each point you know so what you should be doing is take all the words and put a mnemonic around it and that's a good way to remember because a mnemonic will give you a sentence and the sentence will drive you these points and these points will later on drive you to the main 10 point answers. That's a good way to create mnemonics. I have understood in my life that one good way to learn is to learn all the objective. So if you are an 8th standard student, a 10th standard student or even if you are a graduation student, if you can pick up all the objectives, you have actually learned the smaller parts of a big answer. So learning all possible objective will give you a great command over the larger, longer, comprehensive, comprehensive type of answers. If you are giving competitive examination, then boy, you must do a lot of reading and with this reading comes the MCQs and the objective type questions which is going to be your key area. To all the students who are giving MCQ type examinations, remember before you reach writing the answers in the MCQ format, learning the concept is very important and how do you learn the concept is by using one of these many techniques. Without learning the concept, without learning the theory, it is pointless if you come to give the answers in the MCQ format. 
break down your study time into smaller units like do not study more than 25 minutes that's the pomodoro technique you can research well and apply that in your day-to-day -day life the pomodoro technique it's amazing it tells you how your brain can be refreshed every time you are stressed and it can work on the natural bio clock what is extremely volatile is chemical equations, chemical formulas, maths formulas, physics uh, formulas, the numericals, etc. What you do, you keep doing the mind map of it regularly. So pick up a physics chapter and write down all the formulas of that and dump that paper. Take a chemistry uh, chapter and write down all the ways in which methyl alcohol can be prepared. If you're learning preparation of alcohol, on one side you can write down all the ways in which alcohol is prepared. On the other side you can write down all the chemical reactions of alcohol. So keep writing that with the general formula and all the conditions, all the catalysts involved in it. So when you can write down the whole chapter on a piece of paper, dump it, do it again and again and again. Now that's the time when you get complete control, complete grip of the topic of the subject. Success in anything is a matter of consistency and repetition. Matlab ek din ab josh mein aake, tau mein aake, ye sab methods practice kiya. Aur uske char din ke baad ye sab karna hi chhod diya aapne, to kuch nahi hoga aapka. You have to do it consistently, regularly and day after day, month after month till you hit your examination. To jab tak examination nahi aata hai, tab tak aapko ye method follow karte rehna hai. Which means you have to have a detailed timetable, a monthly timetable, a daily timetable. Which means you should have in your house charts put up of all the formulas of all the equations, of all the diagrams, of all the techniques, of all the codes, of all the mnemonics. You can display it all. You can make it on charts on the cell phone page so that when you are free time, you can see it once again. Because this is the only way how your brain is going to remember. It's going to see pictures, think pictures and understand the, the right way in which you can learn. So these are techniques. Some of them may work for you and some of them may not work for you and you may work out some newer additional techniques. But remember, learning with technique is going to be a great stress buster. It's going to be easy and it's going to help you get you closer to your own goals. All the best. Apply these techniques right to us and let us know if there is something additional that you would be looking out for in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much. Have fun.